Uh, we have Jeffrey Appel of Hell Heller Consulting. Excuse me, I stumbled over that a little bit. Uh, Jeffrey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here today. Uh, Jeffrey, you've worked like we're, we're just locked in on this data conversation. You've worked with da nonprofit data and tech infrastructure uh, what, for almost about two decades, correct? Sure. And at Heller Consulting, I've been here for 20 plus years, but prior to that at two different nonprofit organizations, pulling data, pulling lists, getting board reports ready, uh, certainly uh, knee deep in data throughout my career. So, you know, thinking about that and where we stand today, what uh, or why why is connection between systems so important and, and maybe now more than ever? Well, you know, I think Vidya uh, explained it really well, and I don't think there's going to be any surprises here that well data has always been important and it's become absolutely critical in driving connection between systems, you know, especially as organizations are thinking about and looking at ways to have better engagement with their constituency. Uh, and of course, I feel like uh, during the pandemic period when organizations couldn't see their constituents and the people that cared about the, their organizations through either events or volunteer activities, uh, we saw an acceleration of using digital tools to try to find ways to have meaningful engagement with their constituents. And, and, and what drives that is, is having information and understanding how people engage with and care about their organizations. I can't tell you how many times, Ronnie, I've worked with uh, an organization uh, where uh, development fundraising doesn't have any real information on who attended what events or if people had volunteered at their organization before, all of which creates a really rich tapestry of how individuals uh, think about and engage with an organization and can predict, if you have good data, how they will continue to engage with that organization going forward. And so, uh, again, I think we're just, uh, you know, talking about a theme that has become so critical, uh, but data is really what is connecting, uh, I would say, those different systems. And, and, and one of the things I think that has really driven that, uh, and certainly having an opportunity to be in, in this space for so long, uh, has been, you know, platform solutions like Salesforce, like Microsoft has to offer. Uh, I think what was really, really compelling for organizations who adopted those sort of technologies is the idea that they could have a platform that could span across uh, many parts of their organizations and store data in, in one particular product or solution, which would give them that sort of elusive 360 degree view uh, of how people uh, engage with them. Now, of course, uh, for some organizations, they were able to achieve that. I would say, uh, generally speaking, uh, achieving that goal has come with a few road bumps, including, I think, cost, uh, storage of data, complexity uh, of those systems. Uh, but again, you know, I feel like that trend was really driven by data. And now I feel like, in some ways, we're seeing the pendulum swing back the other way, instead of organizations really looking to go to a particular product or platform to get all their data in there to achieve those goals and objectives, they're starting to get a little bit more back to best of breed, especially as these new products and solutions uh, give you access to your data and have open uh, APIs. And we're seeing things like CDPs and data cloud from Salesforce that are allowing organizations to report across different products and systems. And so, uh, again, I think it's a different way of, of achieving the same goal, but it is really to connect the dots of data across their systems. And, and so, you know, I think to support this objective, what we're seeing at Heller Consulting is a really big uptick in, uh, in strategy engagement that, that have to do with data. Uh, and so some of those could be things like data cataloging, this come into our organization, help us identify everywhere, uh, every product, every solution, every spreadsheet where we're storing data, help us assess that data and figure out which data we should be uh, focused on or prioritizing going forward. Uh, we're seeing uh, engagements around data governance where they get groups of individuals across the organizations to agree on a data strategy and what data they're going to be uh, collecting and uh, be really vigilant about being accurate. Uh, and we're also seeing, uh, you know, org so I would say understanding where you have data in your organization and, and participating in that sort of sort of data strategy practice has really allowed 
uh, I think organization to take that next step forward, which of course, uh, and I haven't been able to attend the entire live stream today, but I would be surprised if AI has not been talked about yet. But certainly as organizations are starting to think about and hear about, and of course you can't get away from it, it's everywhere. Uh, and, and what is gonna be the key to driving AI and using success, AI successfully at your organization? It's gonna be in having good data, data that you trust and, and, and AI will only support you uh, in, in areas in which you have uh, data that that it can it can utilize. Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of good nuggets there, but I, I want to go back to some of the hurdles you mentioned, right? You said cost and you said complexity um, are some of the reasons why it's so hard for us to connect those dots. Like we know it's important that everything's connected, but what other hurdles are you seeing with the clients you work with? Yeah. Well, I would say first and foremost, it's people and process. Uh, you know, organizations over the last 20 years I have been doing this, oftentimes think about technology as solving their problems. Uh, and, and really, uh, and most times I think when, when organizations make capital spends uh, to uh, support, I would say, transformation of their business, it's almost always around technology. And Technology is amazing. The, the amount of innovation I've seen throughout my career uh, in the nonprofit sector has been, you know, just just really impressive. However, if you don't deal with the people and process side of that, and oftentimes I would say the change management when you're implementing new technology, uh, you just really end up with another tool uh, that is doing the same thing that your last tool did for you because it hasn't really addressed, again, the people and process side of uh of you know of change and and so you know i think for years uh when i think about you know 20 years ago people having products and solutions where they didn't have access to the data they didn't have uh, open apis uh they had to almost organize themselves more like silos because the product and solution served a particular task or department of course that all changed you know 15 years ago uh, with Salesforce really bursting into the market. And now obviously Microsoft has platform solutions as well. And, and other emerging companies uh, have made their data more available. However, uh, even though I say no longer has is the technology a barrier for this sort of uh, interaction and breaking down silos, it's really been addressing the people and process side of it. And so, uh, so I think, you know, one of the things I would just recommend and say here is before one looks to swap out technology, uh, look at what they could potentially achieve with some of the technology that they have by looking at people in process. I think that's that's so well said, Jeffrey. You know, we think of, um, you know, us as marketers, we think of, uh, you know, the, the message we're going to put out there or the, you know, maybe it's the imagery or something like that. But so critical today in the way marketing works is that we all have to be analysts too. We all have to think about the data and, you know, what, what does it say about this audience I'm trying to reach? And obviously step one is getting that data in the right place and understanding how to use it and understanding how to use those systems. And yeah, like getting, you know, getting people trained up on those systems and how to use them properly is so, so essential. Um, I'm curious, like what, what guidance would you give, you know, a decision maker, um, you know, someone who at an organization, um, if they're trying to improve this, is it where, where should they begin? Should they, should they build that plan of implementation before they start looking at a piece of technology? Where, where do they start? That's a really great question, Ronnie. And, and, and my advice for organizations is uh, don't fall in love with a technology <clears throat> solution first. Like begin with getting institutional, institutional agreement on priorities and objectives. So what am I trying to achieve here? Uh, how does that support our strategic plan as a business? And by doing so, and I think getting agreement across the organization about what you're trying to achieve allows you to create uh, a, a clear set of, uh, I say, technology uh, requirements that you're going to need to go forward and what that tool would look like. So, and only in first agreeing as an organization on what what problem or technology, a solution or requirement that, that you need, then allows you to go look at this technology and evaluate whether or not it's going to help you achieve that 
objective. And so uh, again, I would say, just don't fall in love with a piece of technology. First, we've seen organizations at times run towards implementing a tool or solution uh, because it looks great or they can see how it can fit into their technology stack. However, it may not be the most critical uh, uh, problem or, or, or maybe if you look at it the other way, it might not be the best opportunity they can have to invest and get a, you know, a good ROI on that investment. Uh, and so, you know, I have a couple other things I would say about that. Uh, I would say being proactive instead of reactive to your technology purchase is really important. And so you should be thinking out ahead a few years, uh, looking at your strategic plan and objectives, thinking about how you're going to achieve those and, 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 and then start to think about how technology either that you currently have or that are in the market can help you achieve those goals. And then lastly, and I, and I think this is one item which uh, feels so obvious, but maybe organizations don't always think about this ahead of time, be really clear about what your budget is and the technology infrastructure that you're going to have to have in-house to support that and, and, and stick within that because there are solutions and technology across the marketplace at different price points. So being really clear about, again, what problem am I trying to solve here? What are my objectives? What is my budget and then what are the best options that are going to allow me to achieve those objectives it's the best the best tool may be the one you already have right you just maybe not using it correctly or you know maybe uh need a little training on it it may not uh, be as shiny as a new one but it may, it may actually do the job for you right so uh you mentioned starting with the challenges or the problems you're trying to solve um you know as you've had discussions with uh different you know, nonprofit organizations, what are some of those challenges that you see out there that people are coming to technology and connecting their data to solve right now? Well, you know, for sure over the last, you know, five to 10 years, the emergence of digital fundraising and then obviously omni-channel fundraising. And we've seen just, you know, uh, multiple tools enter the market at different price points. I just heard Vidya talking about journeys and micro journeys. Uh, these are all proven strategies around engagement and building relationships and increasing fundraising. Uh, I think you know the challenge becomes, Ronnie, is is, is that uh, when you see an industry leading tool that supports this kind of strategy, it, it's just really you know it's really impressive. But I think. You know, being realistic about where your organization is on that technology journey and ability to implement uh, those strategies is really important. And so find the right tool for where you're at and where you want to go in the near term, uh, as opposed to quite, quite possibly picking a tool that may be an industry leader, uh, but you don't have the internal infrastructure or support or, or the strategies developed in a way to really take advantage of them. So again, I think it's about really right-sizing, being realistic where you are, creating uh, goals and objectives and finding the right tools uh, or maybe utilizing some of the tools that you already have to best achieve those results. Is that yeah. is that a conversation that you're, you're feel like you're having frequently, um, telling, you know, having the remind people to start where you are, to start with your people versus? Yeah. Well, a great majority of our engagements with organizations do start with a strategy project. And, and, and in most cases, they're thinking about making a capital investment uh, in, in some technology. And, and most of those organizations go ahead and, and, and do that. Uh, and, and so part of what then we do is we build a multi-year plan to go through that kind of change we also look at the technology that they already have in-house and try to focus on the areas that can have the most immediate impact, maybe not the area that they're thinking about they want to change just because maybe they've heard of or they, they've been at an organization that has a, a different tool or a more modern tool that might have a, a better UI. And again, I don't want to come off as somebody who's not advocating for taking advantage of some of the just amazing technology we've seen emerge in the market. Really what I'm advocating for here is uh, acquire technology that that directly addresses your organization's objectives and goals. And sometimes that could be technology you already have in-house or it's augmenting with new technology. It doesn't always require full technology swap out across the organization at one time. 
Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you, Jeffrey, so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me.